Welcome to the Q1 Buck Pool. I'm Tim Hardy's Mike Big Buck Hoffner. Today we have party stories from the Southwest region, the Mid Michigan region, and the far north regions. And you know, Mike, we've heard some great stories as we've talked about for the last number of weeks. Uh, it really is a lot of fun to talk to a lot of the hunters and see the racks instead of just the pictures. And I'll tell you what, Tim, you've got to travel and spend a lot of nights all over the state of Michigan <laughs> on top of it with great stories to boot. Including the Soaring Eagle Casino where we just just had our final prize party and you can look for that webisode at q1buckpole.com in the next week and uh, you'll see the grand prize winners and who won the ATV and all that kind of good stuff. In addition today we've got Jimmy Gretzinger he's got a 12 year old who's going to be shooting some deer and that's with Michigan Out of Doors TV. Yeah, I've seen that episode as well, Tim, and he gets to bag two different deer and practice quality deer management in our state of Michigan. And finally, we've got Larry March from the Battle Creek Farm Bureau talking about food plots because coming up will be the time to start getting your food plot planted. We'll have more coming up. Stay with us. You're watching the Q1 Buck Bowl. Q1 Buck Bowl. Michigan's biggest and best buck pull contest. Brought to you by these sponsors who support Michigan's great outdoors. Back here on the Q1 Buck Pull, Tim and Mike here, and uh, we have confirmed all the measurements, and you can go to q1buckpull.com for the final standings. You know, Tim, it's been a great year, and I really like that we've taken the opportunity to be fair with all of our contestants by rescoring all the nice racks that have been brought in. We've got some great stories here today from the Southwest region, also the Mid-Michigan region, and the far north. He slowly unzips the window, and he's like, oh, there's a buck, there's a buck. And I, I mean, there's a bunch of woods in front of us, so I had no clue where it was. And uh, he's grabbing the binoculars, and I'm trying to grab the gun, and like I had no clue where it was. And he's like, it's right down there to the right behind the, all the cam racks and all that stuff down there, brush. And it stands up, and my dad, it's turning its head and everything. And my dad's like, you want me to shoot it? You want me to shoot it? And I'm like, no, I want to shoot it. And uh, so I grabbed the gun, and I freehanded shot. I dropped it right away, and it was probably a 100-yard shot to the bottom. It got up and crawled to the other side, and I shot it again. And my dad wasn't even looking at me really when I shot it. Yeah. And I'm like, Dad, Dad, I dropped his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like fast I've ever saw my dad run down the hill. Yeah. And so I'm like trying to get... Well, his son just dropped his ass. Hell, I went yeah. run too. Yeah, my dad got up there and he's all pumped, grabbing. Oh, it's a 10 point, it's a 10 point. November 17th, I shot it. We stayed uh, up a little too late drinking some Bud Lights. So, uh, didn't feel like going out, but I made my way out. And uh, about 7.30, I woke myself up by snoring. <laughs> and uh, about the same time, I heard a couple deer rattling a little ways away from me. I looked in that direction, and the next thing I know, I saw a deer coming at me. So I got my muzzleloader ready and put the scope on him. And I kept following him and following him and following him. And then uh, finally he turned broadside, and I shot him. And there he laid about six yards below me. I was hunting out on our land in Swartz Creek. We have a farm out there. And uh, it's always hard to hunt because you've got a lot of neighbors making noise. But they, <laughs> they come to the rescue that day. I was out there for quite a while. And they started making all kinds of noise and this big old buck just came right out. Just coming out in front of me and about 50 yards away and I shot him. First time hunting with a crossbow. How long have you been hunting? Oh, not too well. Deer hunting just a little while, but I've hunted uh, all my life a little bit. Yeah, coming from the South, my mother taught me how to hunt. Well, I didn't know you were from the South. I thought maybe I'm a gene was from Flint. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to I'm a gene. It was uh, November 3rd, um, which is my birthday. I uh, got up in the morning, went out, uh, sat till about 9.30. It was kind of rainy, windy. Decided to get down. I collected a trail camera before I went to my truck. And uh, when I was at my truck, I looked over the trail camera and I had him on my camera two days prior. So I packed all my stuff back up, got back in the tree stand about 10 o'clock or so, and I wasn't up there for five minutes. 
he came through chasing a doe up on top of a ridge. I had him at 15 yards broadside, drew back, and my arrow fell to the bottom of my tree. Regained my composure and knocked another arrow. I was waiting, waiting. He started taking off again. I bleeped at him again. He stopped at about 35 yards, and I let it go, and I nailed him. Your biggest buck? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> It was, uh, Hand it to him, get the hell out of here. Good to see you, dude. <laughs> it was October 29th, uh, seven o'clock in the morning, he come out. Uh, it was all happening in about 30 seconds. He rocked right up about 15 yards to the left. I shot him, he took off running, and I thought, man, I just missed the biggest buck of my life. He stopped about 60 yards, walked around for three, four minutes, finally he just dropped right there. Right on the spot, didn't have to walk far then, huh? No, nope, not at all. You're a happy camper? Yes, I was. You're a man of a lot of words, you know? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, I did. Well, congratulations. Thanks for being a part of the Q1 Thanks Buck Poll. All right. Those are just some of the stories from our recent parties, but Mike, we've got the webisode coming up from the final party at the Soaring Eagle Casino. You know, that's the grand finale of all, Tim, and we had a great turnout as always, and just check it out online. You can see who won the ATV muzzleloaders, crossbows, we had bows, we had all kinds of things that we gave away that night, and uh, we had some funny stories, interesting stories, some serious stories too. Yeah, well that's what it's all about, <laughs> Tim, is making friends and at the same time, getting to take a look at some of the great gear that we brought in. And when we come back, we got a special feature from Michigan Outdoors TV. They have a 12 year old on his first rifle hunt, and he's successful. Stay with us. We've got more coming up right here on the Q1 Buck Pole. One of the things that we try to promote here continuously is taking youth out hunting. You know, a lot of people take them out for that youth weekend, Mike, uh, but you know there's times that you could take them out for crossbows, uh, you could take them out with the bow, shotgun, whatever the case is, and there's a lot of kids that took deer this year in the contest with muzzleloaders. And you know, it's a tremendous bonding experience, Tim. And the other thing that it is, is, is the educational part that goes along with bringing your kids out in the, the outdoors and teaching them how to do it right. Here's a special feature from Michigan Out of Doors TV with Jimmy Gretzinger. We were perched in a pop-up blind on an elevated platform situated on a power line on some nearby private land. Since it was a little tight in the blind, Ryan would face one direction while Rick faced the other direction, and then I was trying to play center field with the camera to capture the action no matter where it may happen. We hadn't seen a hair, but all that changed in a matter of seconds. made the statement that you have long periods of nothing <laughs> and short periods of bliss. We just found the short period of bliss. Boy, that was quick. Tell me what just happened. Well, I was looking the other way, talking to Ryan, give him a hard time because he took his gun down. And I turned and looked back and there was a buck standing right out in my shooting lane. Yeah, and uh, so then I got you on the camera, turned around and made a good <clears throat> shot on him. I think he's dead right yeah. here. We didn't have much time there, did we? It was pretty quick. In fact, I had to wait. My trigger was getting really itchy. But you got the camera on him just in time, so it was good. As we high-fived, wouldn't you know, a nice doe came out of the woods right after that buck. We got Ryan around to the other side of the blind so he could try and take his very first deer. He's right out in the open, right in the sun, see him? That's all right, just wait for him to stop. I got it, turn it off. Wait for it to stop. Okay, if you're ready, go ahead, Ryan. <laughs> Boy, we sat here for what, a couple hours and nothing, yeah. and within a couple of minutes, we shot two deer. Two or three. <laughs> that was cool. No, actually, it looked like you were on a pretty good one. The deer, when he shot, the deer really made a good jump and oh, then took cool. off on it. So it looks like he did okay. It's amazing how a hunt can change in a few minutes. We went from not seeing a deer to having two of them down in a matter of minutes. We went to find the deer, and Dave, who was sitting near enough to hear the action, came over as well and helped us find our deer. Yeah. 
even better yet, he's a restricted tag. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's a four on a side. Yes, he is. He's a nice little deer. Eight for deer camp standards, a seven for real world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Way to go. Hey, hey, hey. There you go. What do you say, young fella? That was cool. <laughs> Way to go, son. Very nice. Officially in, you know. The brotherhood. The brotherhood of uh, deer hunters here, yep. <laughs> so yeah, good job. So were you at all nervous pulling the trigger? I mean, or were you just thinking about too much stuff or what? Um, but it happened pretty quick. Yeah. Both steer came out really fast, and I didn't have time to turn up my power on my scope, so I just shot. <laughs> <laughs> you did good. <laughs> yeah, you did really well. It was really neat to be able to be there when this father-son team was able to take a couple of deer. Ryan had done a great job, and since he does quite a bit of shooting with Dad, he was able to handle the moment of truth like a real pro. We'd like to thank Michigan Outdoors TV for being a promotional sponsor this year, along with Mike Avery Outdoors, a number of radio stations across the state, and it's just a way that we can bring all of these hunting organizations together right here on the Q1 Buck Pool. Yeah, we've made it simple for the public. Just. Tune in and watch Q1 Buckpool. You can see past TV episodes at Q1Buckpool.com. And as I said earlier, you can see the final standings. Stay with us. When we come back, we're going to talk about how you can set up cover along with setting up a food plot with Larry March from the Battle Creek Farm Bureau. You're watching the Q1 Buckpool. Since baiting is banned, a lot of people are planting food plots. And you know, Mike, not only are they planting the food plots to keep the deer and wildlife in their areas, but what they're also doing is setting up screens. Yeah, well, it's creating a natural environment, Tim, and I think an important piece in the element of taking care of your food plots is creating some privacy for yourself. One of the experts in the field we've been talking to the last number of years is Larry March from the Battle Creek Farm Bureau. He's gonna explain food plots and setting up a screen. Well, we're in the Marshall area right now. Tim Hart with Larry Marsh from the Battle Creek Farm Bureau. And one of the things we're gonna talk about right now, and again, you know, food plots, because we've talked about it a lot on our shows, uh, but Larry has kind of taken it to the next level, haven't you, Larry? He's got, he went from a small food plot a few years ago to really an expansive one out here. Larry, real quick, what, what's the purpose of doing this out behind your house, and what are you testing? Well, the reason I, that I do it is to plant different things, to see how the deer react to it see which ones they like to eat the best, uh, give them a little more sampling. Also, we take in, it's how we develop some of our new mixes. We try different seeds and see how, they, see how they're actually doing. Now, one of the things you'll notice um, right here, you know, we've got a lot of growth here behind us. And, yep. and the road sits uh, up in front where the camera is. And then you've got this, then you've got your food plot. What's the purpose? Well, the pr two purposes. The main reason we plant this is to get some, something, we get some height to it and it actually makes a good screen or a block. So if you got uh, traffic going by a food plot area and you really don't want them to see your wildlife or the deer that's out back. Also, there's food value to this. In this seed head will actually be uh, sorghum, grain sorghum. Mm -hmm. So this is a combination of uh, grain sorghum and Sud of a Sudan. So it's, a, it's been bred together so you get the height and also you get some seed head. See the seed heads that are in here. They're still what I would call green, or they're a soft seed. But when that gets mature, um, actually it'll get heavy and it'll actually start hold, holding down like this, but the deer can reach it real easy. Mm -hmm. It's called special effort. Special effort. Now, is this a yep. special mix or something I can it's, just get it's, anywhere? Well, it's a, from a company that I buy products from that they have it available. All right. uh, a lot of grain sorghum that you buy for wildlife is uh, it's bred to be short in height. And the reason for that is so that the turkeys and other wildlife can feed it. But this works also real good for cover in the wintertime, because after this frost and you get a little snow on it, it kind of falls down, but it gives you a lot of voids underneath. Rabbits will run under it, uh, pheasants do like it a lot. All right, so, let's, uh, so that's your cover, all right? So if you got a road out here and you want to kind of block things off, uh, that's one of the things that you can do. We're gonna walk over here and we're gonna talk about some of the different food plots you got out here. Okay. 
So about 30 yards off the special effort area that we were in, uh, that cover that we were talking about, um, Larry really has um, half acre plots of a variety of um, you know uh, food mixtures and, and that sort of thing. Dif Let's talk about what you have out here. Well, there are different types of clover. Uh, this one that's right next to us here is our Battle Creek uh, Buck Mix, which has got alfalfa and clover in it. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is uh, a New Zealand clover, then I have a Whitetail Institute clover and then another clover on the far side. And the reason we planted different ones is to, to see how they compare to each other, mm -hmm. how, the, how the growth patterns are, which one we get the most growth, which one we get the most uh, root system development to it. Um, this year was a little unusual because we had a cold spring, things germinated slow. Then we had crabgrass germination. So we actually had to go in and do some spraying to kill the crabgrass out. Once the crabgrass was killed out, then we went in and mowed off all the dead grass. Well, the type of year we had, we had a second germination. So we had some more grasses come in. So we have went in and uh, have mowed it. And some of these we've been, been mowing in strips, trying to keep the growth down. Two things is to try to develop the root system a little bit more okay. in areas that we didn't. And not just for this year, but obviously for in well, some yeah, years. Yeah, here. next year you come out here, and if this hasn't been mowed off, there'll be clover that'll be knee high. Okay. And it'll be just solid clover. Hey Larry, how long has this been out here? So is this just a, a one year or two year plot? This was planted this spring. Okay, so that's the spring of 09. Yep, spring of 09, and this is uh, September 1st, or right. September the 3rd. Um, and the reason you'll see different heights is because we've mowed some of it and some of it we haven't. Um, I'm not too concerned with uh, some of the grasses that's in here. These are annual grasses. When we get some frost now, they'll die out. Now let's talk about that root system that Larry was uh, uh, discussing right now. Uh, show us what we got here. Well, see, you got the main plant that came right up out of the center. And then what's happened is you had these stolons going across and it keeps shooting up new plants. And along with that, it'll start putting out new root system. So from one plant, you get multiple plants coming up. Okay. So that's the way this has been bred and developed. Is so you start out with kind of a thin you know, stand to start with, but every year it just keeps getting a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. And what we've done this year by going in and mowing this, we've actually been forcing it to do this a little bit more. Okay. They, see, the bees like the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the bees do. They're buzzing. You can't yep. hear They're buzzing around. Well, but, but like this mix right in here, and if you look, you can see there's different sizes of leaves on the clover, and that's because there's different types of clover in here. Okay, all right. And one thing that we've noticed that there's some... See, this here has got a real nice tender stalk to it. Mm -hmm. There's some that's got a little tougher stalk. Mm -hmm. The ones with the nice tender stalks, the deer will eat, eat it right down. The, and then they'll, some of them they'll eat just the just the tops. All right. Well, if you'd like more information about food plots, we've got a number of people on throughout the state. Uh, but Larry Martz is uh, one of the people that uh, can give you all the details over at the Battle Creek Farm Bureau. Larry, uh, thanks for talking about food plots with us today and give us a little tips and advice. We'd like to thank everybody for participating in this year's edition of the Q1 Buck Pull. We've had a lot of information from not only the DNR, but uh, people like Larry Martz, Jeff Ryder, how to set up your land. And you know, Mike, it's always great to bring hunters together to figure out what is the best way to maintain and balance the herd that we have here in the state of Michigan. Yeah, it's all been about education and learning, Tim. And boy, I'll tell you what. Time flies when you're having fun, and we've had a phenomenal year here on the Big Buck Pole. Special thanks to all the members of the Quality Deer Management Association for helping out this year, uh, all of our sponsors that provided prizes, and of course, we want to remind you that you can go online at q1buckpole.com to see the Soaring Eagles final party. Our webisode will be online here in about a week. I'll tell you what, drum roll, Tim, because next year I think we're moving toward the direction of having even more of an exciting year with big bucks in Michigan. And we remind you, whenever you're out in the woods, make sure that you stay safe. For Mike Big Buck Hoffner, I'm Tim Hart. It's been our pleasure bringing you this year's edition of the Q1 Buck Poll. For the latest on Michigan hunting, pick up the current edition of Woods & Water News, Michigan's premier outdoor publication, available on newsstands or by subscription. Woods and Water News, proud sponsor of the Q1 Buck Pole. Hold on. Back here on the Q1 Buck Pole, again, Tim Hart, Mike, Big Buck Hoffner. Well, we have confirmed all the measurements and the final results are in. You can go to Q1BuckPole.com. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> He did. It's like, wow, what put him on something? Man, well, I as soon as he started talking, I'm going, holy crap. I knew what I wanted to say, and I wanted to get it out. 
uh, for fear of memory know. loss. We've seen big bucks, and most of all, uh, we've, uh, crap. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. Here's Larry March and myself talking about food plots, and that was just not good the way it ended. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, my God, he does have tie shoes on. I guarantee you, go, you listen to some of these. Other... <laughs> I'm liking it, man. Keep going. Behave. <laughs>